back to my channel. If this is your first time here, hello, my name is Nika. Thank you so much for stopping in. So today I just want to talk about 10 things that I feel are very vital that I've learned in 2021. Since we're wrapping up the year now and I typically, I try my best y'all, I'm so sorry um, that I'm not always consistent, but uh, my goal is to drop a video every Monday and Thursday, which makes today my last video of the year. So, um, you know, I just wanted to just let you all know what I've learned or what I've come to, you know, just come to realization on and, and come to, came to accept, basically, um, just from 2021 um, as we go into the new year. Um, you know, we don't know what to expect, but we can just uplift each other and continue to, you know, give each other some advice and try to push through it the best that we know how. So first off, it's such a blessing that you all are here. You know, we made it to the end of the year, y'all. So um, with that being said, just take some time and just like reflect back on the year and, and think back. I know we've all gone through something. Um, 2020 and 2021 were some rough years. I get it, y'all. But um, just take some time and kind of reflect back and then overall just realize where you are and realize that you still have purpose because you're still here. You're watching this video and um you know it's something to be grateful for even if you have had a rough year it's still something to be thankful for because a lot of people didn't make it to this point so that's the first thing so let's go ahead and jump right on into my 10 things i've learned in 2021 so first got my little notes here too so you're gonna see me looking down some that's because i have my notes so first uh the thing that i've learned is that Things happen in their points of time. And no matter what I do, no matter what I say, no matter how hard I pray and ask God and, you know, put forth the effort to get something to happen right now or right at that time that I wanted it to happen, I realized that if it was meant to happen for me, it happened at the time that it was meant to happen. And there was nothing I could do. There was nothing I could say to make it come to make it come to pass or make it a reality for me. There was a lot of things that I wanted in 2021 that I did not get. Um, that's, like I said, partly because it's just not time for it to happen yet. And I'm grateful for that because honestly, when I think about it, y'all, when I sit back and I think like, okay, if this was to happen for me tomorrow, how would I feel? And sometimes some of those things that I wanted, y'all, I'm not gonna lie, like, the thought of like really getting it right now at where I am in my life right now, it scares me. And so I know that I still have some work to do and that I still just need to be patient because it's not time yet, but it will happen when, it, when it's meant to. That's what I learned um, leaving this year, like me moving from Indiana to Texas. Um, I was trying to push forward in 2020 and pushing forward at the beginning of 2021. And it just wasn't falling into place for me. But when the time was right, the doors open and I was, I, I made it. I'm here, I'm settled in. And you know, things are so far going very well for me and my daughter. So, you know, I'm that showed me that things don't happen just because I speak it out and say it's gonna happen. Like, yeah, it's great to to affirm things and to speak out what you want and to have a vision. But you can't be so wrapped up in your timeline that you forget about God's timeline for you or you forget about the higher your higher power or the universe's timing for you or you just forget about in general that just because you want it right now doesn't mean you're ready. So that's one of the things I learned. Number two, I can't control nobody but myself, y'all. <laughs> It's funny, it's common sense. Obviously, yes, you, you really can't control nobody but yourself, but... I, you know, I was always so, I had a habit of thinking I had control or I could control situations when it comes to other people or things that other people decided to do. And in 2021, I had a lot of slaps in the face, like, no, this is not what I want. Or, you know, if I said it, I wanted somebody to be a certain way or I wanted people to behave in certain ways because, you know, that control factor was Aries. But, um, you know, when I when I tried to have that control on everything and wanted people to, to respond the way I wanted to, them to respond and wanted them to behave the way that I wanted them to behave and it did not happen, 
it helped me to grow and to realize like you don't have control over nobody but yourself like i don't know what you think you're doing who you think you are you can control yourself and now if you don't like the way that this person's responding or this person's uh, reacting to something or this person's behaving you had a choice to walk away from it or to deal with it but you can't change what someone else is wanting to do with their own life you can't you have no control over that so that's what i learned in 2021 and when i say i learned it like i've been knew that but when i say i learned it it's because I, I i i really learned it i didn't just hear it i didn't just see it i didn't just know it i like let it sink into my soul and and accepted that part of me like accepted that i was controlling and that was something that i needed to break in order to have a, a happier life you know being controlling and trying to be in control of everything is exhausting and honestly when i think back i'm so grateful that i let a lot of things go because that control and trying to trying to organize everything my way and trying to have everything figured out my way it was exhausting i don't even know like how I was happy living that type of lifestyle but now I'm just sitting back and I'm just letting it go and I'm letting people be who they are and show me who they are and be okay with it and and know that I have control over myself so I can choose what I want to do with dealing with this person or this thing or this situation I have the choice to choose that so you know I'm, I'm happier now that I actually learned it and accepted it you know so now I'm not trying to pressure people to doing what i want them to do or behave in the ways that i wanted them to behave because i know now that you can do what you want to do because you're your own person that's your right but i can too and i can choose to keep you in my circle or do away from it and so that's that was something i feel was really really vital for me to learn because like i said y'all i was a control freak i needed to have everything my way and i needed to know how things were going to start and how they were going to end but that was exhausting and i exhausted other people by behaving in that type of way so i changed that i've been working on that and i accepted you know that from 2021 i learned a lot from that um third having a daily skin routine is essential if you want soft healthy young youthful skin have a daily routine and that's from head to toe like you need to take care of that scalp y'all make sure you moisturize in that scalp because you know you got dry itchy flakes and all that stuff going on you need to take care of that make sure you moisturize in your scalp your oiling sealing it whatever you need to do to keep that moisture in there so you don't have those flakes and you don't have that dry scalp because having a dry scalp sucks I, i'm i have that problem sometimes still i don't have dandruff but i do have the dry scalp because you know i'll be being lazy sometimes and i not watering my plant you know y'all gotta water y'all plant you think of your hair as your plant you gotta water that scalp y'all and then you know your face that is what everybody sees that's the first thing people are looking at when they see you so you want to make sure that you're taking good care of that skin making sure that you're you know cleaning your skin every day i don't care if you don't wear makeup you need to be having you know deep cleaning your face moisturizing it and you know just making sure that you're not putting harsh things on your face and you're just really loving on you loving on the skin that you have moisturize them lips y'all but y'all be walking around here looking all dusty and crusty i don't mean to be rude but some of y'all do i need to fix that a little ch a chapstick is on there dial at the dollar store go get you some chapstick put yours in chapstick and put some vaseline on every night put some vaseline on your lips gonna be soft and pretty trust me take it from your big sis your big cousin your little sis whoever i am to you take it from your friend and of course neck down you're doing the same thing make sure you're exfoliating make sure you're you know using a gentle soap make sure that you're you're, you're really just self-loving on yourself giving yourself some self-care you know really just loving on you i mean it's you feel beautiful too at the end of the day and then your skin glows you're, you're glowing, you're happy, you feel soft, you're not all rough and stuff. Like, take care of yourself. Make sure, you know, shaving your legs, shaving different parts of your body. If you feel like that's what you need to do, do it. Do whatever, it, it, whatever makes you feel good. You need to be doing that. And I learned now what I've been doing over the last couple of months is now, like, I start, you know, 
cleanse my skin and everything, put on my moisturizers, even at night, like, well, not even at night, but even on my face, like, I, I use coconut oil on my entire body. And then, you know, my skin be beautiful and glowing and soft and stuff. So I just want to share with y'all so that you can, you know, definitely try it out for yourself. Like, love on yourself. You are responsible for you and the best love comes from yourself. So show yourself some love. You ain't got to have somebody to take care of your body. Don't want to wait till you in a relationship to try to take care of your body. It's going to be too late by then. You're going to have a whole lot of damage. You're going to have to redo or undo. And, you know, when you can be doing it now. And then that way when your person comes, you're going to be all soft and beautiful. And, you know, and it's going to be routine for you. You're going you're gonna to keep it going. I believe in you, sis. And, bro. I know you're going to do it good, too. You're going to take care of yourself, right? Because ladies like a soft man, too. So, that's uh, my third tip. My fourth tip is self-love, or my fourth lesson, what I learned this year, is self-love is not selfish. I used to think it was so selfish when I first, because um, I was a habitual dater. Like I said, I, I was always in a relationship, long relationships. And when I finally, well, I guess it is finally. That's a good way to put it. When I finally had a chance to be alone, single, nobody's tied to me. Um, you know, I was, it, it felt we, It felt really weird for me and, and hard for me to give myself that love because I wanted to give it to, to other people because I was so used to doing that. Not that they were asking me to do that, but because that's what I wanted to do. I'm a nurturer. So um, I started feeling like it was selfish, but then once I started getting into and getting in tune with myself and becoming my own best friend and just loving on me, I realized that self-love is essential for everybody's life. You need to have that self-love because no one's going to be able to love you better than you. So with that being said, you need to be able to give it to yourself and don't feel bad about it. If you need to spend a day by yourself, you should be able to do that in a relationship or not in a relationship. If you want to just, you don't want to go out and do nothing, you just want to sit home, have you a bubble bath, read you a book, watch your favorite TV show, you are able to do that because you can't neglect you for somebody else. You can't take away your time from yourself to just give to everybody else or let someone else control what, what you need to be doing with your life. So take it from me. Self-love is not selfish. You can, you can give for yourself all the self-love that you want to. And you can still love other people and still allow people to love you. But you just need to still have a time at least once a week where you just have some self-love for yourself. Whatever it is. And remember, it's not selfish. It's not selfish. Even if you got to take time away from the kids and just say, I'm going to just going to just relax, take a, an hour nap or something. It, that's not selfish. So be okay with self-loving on yourself because you're important and you know how to love you better than anybody else knows how to love you in this world. So remember, you deserve it. Give yourself some of that self-love. Love on you. Give yourself what you feel like you need. And then you can get back into loving other people and pouring into other people and, you know, continue that life throughout the week. But make sure you take some time for yourself, at least once a week, to love on yourself. Number five, um... Time waits for no one. I'm sure we all know that, but sometimes we we kind of we kind of sit still and we don't we don't realize that we're living on borrowed time every day that we wake up. It's borrowed time from our higher power, from from God, from from Jesus, whatever you believe. Our time is not promised. You didn't wait. You didn't. You wasn't born and said you automatically gonna have a hundred years. You're automatically gonna live. 200 years or whatever you didn't get that so every day you wake up is it's a gamble so what throughout that day you can wake up and walk outside your door and get shot like i know that sounds horrible but it's true like that's just how unpredictable life is and how unpromised life is and and a lot of us if you're anything like me i, I don't want to talk bad about nobody but if you're anything like me then you tend to let days pass you by as if you got a hundred more to go and you don't even know. You don't know how much more you have to go. So when I started paying attention to time waits for no one, I've, I've been trying to encourage myself to get out of the bed, sis. Like get up, go do something. Like go, go outside, you know, call a friend, do something productive, something to, to show somebody else you care for them, something. Don't just waste it away, staying in the bed, sleeping, 
you know, sleep is great. You should be getting to sleep. That's a part of your self-care too, y'all. But, but just sleeping a whole day away, that's not healthy. And you just let a day pass because you woke up that day and let's say you slept it away. You did nothing with that day. Nothing. But someone took their last breath that day and they wish they had another day that you just wasted away. So with that being said, just keep in mind that time waits for no one. And every day we're living, we're dying and we're getting older. You know, our bodies are changing no matter how healthy you are, how fit you are, how healthy you eat. Your body is deteriorating because you're getting older. You're, you know, it's just natural. It's, it's a part of life. So while you're still, while you're still youthful and you still have energy to do stuff, enjoy your life. Live it. Even if you just go outside and just go clean up your backyard or something. I don't know. Something. Just do something. Because, like I said, tomorrow's not promised. Things are not guaranteed. And, you know, you, you just don't want to waste it away. Because Tom keeps going, as we can see. He, you, I know you guys have put, had times when you went out with your friends or something, had a great time. You look up and it's already three, four hours in passing. You like, it's already almost time for the party to be over or it's time for me to go home. And, you know, it just goes so fast. So just enjoy it and make sure that you're putting effort into enjoying it and living your life. Number six, I learned I'm not too old to learn new things. Um, I never thought that for sure. Like I never was like, oh yeah, I'm too old to learn. But it, it, what I'm saying here is um, I'm not too old to learn from younger people. I'm not too old to learn from my daughter. I'm not too old to learn from younger children. You know, everything is changing and evolving in life. And there's a lot of things that kids teach me that I never knew. And so I'm, I'm, I humble myself to, to learn something new, no matter how old you are. If you're older than me, younger than me, you know, it doesn't matter. Same age as me, you know, if you have something to teach me, if I feel like I can learn something from you, I'm going to take, I'm going to listen and learn. I'm not going to say, well, you're just a kid or you haven't gone through this and that before. So I don't want to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Because there, people can teach you things. They don't necessarily have to go through exactly what you've been through in life, but they're, they, people carry things like we all go through something and we learn something from it and we're able to use our testimonies to help somebody else. So with that being a factor, you know, something that's true, we can all learn from each other and you're never too old. You're, you're learning every day. Like I said before, even when you're not trying to learn something, if you're listening to different things, if you're hanging around certain people, you're learning something, even if you don't want to. So just just be open to learning. That's what I learned. And trust me, I've learned a lot just from opening up my mind and accepting that I can learn from anybody. Just something I learned. Number seven, I learned that my relationships are my relationships. And with that being said, my relationship doesn't need to look like your relationship. It doesn't have to look like what society says a relationship should look like. No matter what it is, my relationship with God, my relationship with Jesus, my relationship with my daughter, my relationship with my friends. If I was in a romantic relationship, then that, rom that romantic relationship as well. Nothing is exempt. My relationships are my relationships and I have the right to choose how I want to go about having those relationships. And, you know, it, it feels so good when you remind yourself of that, that you, the way that you want relationship in your life it's okay because that's what you want. And if someone is willing to give that to you or if things are working out for you, whatever whatever dynamic you got going on, it feels good to know like you don't have to compare your relationships to other people's relationships. You don't have to, your, your family doesn't need to look the same as someone else's. Your friendships don't need to look the same as, as your, your other friends. Like it, you don't have to be on social media trying to find relationship goals your relationships are, are just that they're yours they're personal they're for you nobody can tell you how to have that relationship like i said even with a higher being no one can tell you how you should be in relationship with your higher power what you believe in no one should be able to tell you how you should be you know communicating with your higher power what you should be believing in you know that's all up to you because it's your life and you have to make those decisions for yourself and be okay 
with whatever the consequences are and whatever you you know whatever relationship you have that's what you have to be okay with because you build those relationships for yourself so that's what i learned number eight it's okay to be single i mean my first year being single this is my second year going into my third year but um my first year it was really rough y'all like I hated it. Like, I was like, why? The f and then I'm watching all these videos of people trying to help, you know, help people like me get over breakup and all that kind of stuff. And then it's like, you know, they're saying like, oh, it's okay. You'll be fine. And I, I, did, I despised it. I was like, you know, this sucks. You don't have nobody to hang out with. You, you know, you don't, the things you used to do and you're used to, you don't have it anymore. How is that a great thing? But since I've healed, key word, healed. Since I've healed y'all, like being single is beautiful because you. this is a time that, that I get to love on me. This is a time that I get to see what I like. I could date multiple people. I'm not committed to anybody. So I'm not breaking anybody's heart. I'm not playing a game, not sneaky leaking with nobody. It's none of that. It's, you know, it's purely me figuring out what I want, what I'm looking for. And also learning what I'm looking for, learning what it is that I feel like I need in order to have a fulfilled and happy life. You know, really sitting with myself and, and just enjoying not having to, not having to answer to anybody, not having to, you know, not having to share my life with anybody right now, where it's like, if I want to do something and maybe that person doesn't, you know, I have to sacrifice. That's what it is not having to sacrifice from what you want to do you know so right now i'm free i could do what i want to do and it's not hurting anybody i can hang out with who i want to hang out with i can talk to who i want to talk to you know so once i started once i healed healed first and then i start reinventing my life my life doesn't mean any more or less than someone who's in a relationship or not it just doesn't it doesn't mean anything. And my life is not defined by me being with somebody, me being connected to somebody. It doesn't. So since I learned that and I've grown a new appreciation for myself and I've learned to, to just be happy. Being happy is a choice, y'all. It's, it's not, I used to think that it was something. It was someone that gave you happiness. But it's not. Being happy is a choice. You just make that choice when you get up every day. I want to be happy. I'm going to be happy. And you you work towards that happiness for yourself. Because let me tell you a little secret. Even when you're in a relationship, that's the same attitude you're going to have to have. Because it's not no one's job to make you happy. It's your job. You have to make you happy. Simple. So why not go ahead and start now if you're single? Start now learning different ways that you can you can cope with feeling alone or you can cope with anger or sadness or whatever. So then you'll know how to how to um, get back to a happy place on your own without telling somebody else that they're responsible for you to be happy. No. So like I said, it's okay to be single. You can still reach all the goals you want. You can still be happy. You can still have joy and still live life and be single. It uh, is not. It doesn't take time off your life. It does not. It doesn't make you a, a horrible person. It doesn't make you unlovable. None of that. It just says right now at the, during this season of your life, you just need to be alone for whatever reason that is. Whether that's to focus on a higher power, focus on your goals as far as. You know, you going to school, if that's what you're doing, or you writing books, you getting out here making videos, you know, you traveling the world, whatever it is, it's just something, it's, it's just time for you to take advantage of. Not be sad, y'all. Be sad for your little week or two. I get it. But after that, it's time to to blossom. It's time to figure out why I'm single. Why, why am I being called to singleness right now? And then enjoy it. And be grateful for it because you're going to find somebody so eventually you're going to end up in a relationship you're going to end up married so while you have the chance be happy and have fun y'all live life don't don't allow social media to make you feel like you're unlovable you're not beautiful you're not handsome you don't got nothing going on for yourself because you're single 
no, don't. Because if you really knew the true stories behind those relationships, that's all I'm going to say. We'll talk about that another time. <laughs> but you get what I'm trying to say, y'all. Like, it's okay. And since I accepted that, I live my best life. I hang out I, when I want to. I sleep when I want to. I wake up when I want to. I cook when I want to. You know, when my daughter, we, we here. We, we, we on the same wave. We good. You know what I'm saying? But if I was to have a husband or a boyfriend right now, He's not, he's not in tune with me like that. So it, it's a lot of things going to change. And, you know, a lot of time I have to devote to my daughter and doing what I want to do and then making sure he's happy or not making sure he's happy or making sure I'm adding to his happiness. So like I said, y'all, it ain't anyone else's job to keep you happy. It's theirs. It's your own. So number nine, um, 30s is not old. <laughs> Being in your 30s, in my opinion, is the new start of life. Like, you always think like, oh, yeah, in my 20s, you know, yeah, I'm turning up, I'm learning, I'm having fun. This is the, this is my, my year, so I'm going to get chosen. But honestly, 20, you still baby. And life is a wreck. Life is crazy. Life is like a big spinning wheel going out of control. That's what 20s was for me. I, I don't know. If some of y'all had some great 20s. But for me, I had fun. I had a lot of fun. But when I compare where I am right now at 32 to how I was in my 20s, I have to personally say that being in your 30s, life is just beginning for you. You know, now um, I, know, I have a clear idea of what I want, what, I, what kind of career I want, what I want out of life, what I want in a partner, what I want as far as my parenting, like what type of what type of parenting skills I want to have when it comes between me and my daughter. I have an idea of, you know, how to save money and how to invest in something, how to invest in myself. I know how to care for myself, y'all. I know how to care for my, my skin. I know how to care for my hair. I know how to care for my smile. I know how to do those things now. Versus in my 20s, it was like I was just all over the place. Like I don't know what I'm doing. I'm weaving it up. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm get some cheap one dollar lotion and put that lotion on. I'm good. Like I wasn't truly in love with myself, but now in my thirties, I have a new type of love for myself because I've been hurt. I've hurt others. I've done all that, you know. So now that love that I have for myself is because I needed it. It's like a a vitamin, an antidote for for me. That's what I needed. And I have it now in my 30s. And I feel like life is just beginning. I feel like I'm finally, I finally reached a point of life where things make sense. So I used to, you know, if you still young, y'all in y'all teenage years, y'all in your early 20s, I get it. Y'all think 30s is old. But honestly, it's not, y'all. 30s is beautiful because now you're you're growing up. It's until you get there, I don't know what to tell y'all. I mean, the best thing I can say is just look forward to your 30s. And it's a blessing because not a lot of people make it to their 30s. So, it's first, it's a blessing. And then second, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful ride. And then you're, you're more stable in your 30s. Take it from me. You may feel like he'll right? You may feel like you, your life is spiraling out of control. I get it. I've been there. But I'm trying to tell you. Wait till you hit 30. 30, you might still be a little bit eh, rocky, you know what I'm saying? Because you just you just hit that 30. But by 31, I promise you, you're going to have a whole new sight on life. You're going to want different things. You, things are just going to make sense. And you're going to feel good. You're going to feel beautiful. More beautiful than you did in your 20s, I promise you. Take care of yourself now. So when you hit your 30s, you're going to be living your best life. And then, number 10 is I learned to live for today because like I said before tomorrow's not promised every second of the day is not promised so I used to just live for you know months away like oh like okay I plan a trip let's say oh in in three weeks I go on vacation I, that's I, that's when I'm really gonna be happy and so every day I'm just going to work dragging my feet 
not wanting to talk to nobody. I'm just looking forward to that that vacation date to be happy. Now I don't. Now I don't. And it is definitely a choice you have to make. You have to make it. It's not just going to come natural. It's not. It doesn't come with age. It comes with you making up your mind and saying like, okay, I want to... I want to be happy today. I'm just going to focus on today. Stop living for yesterday and stop living for tomorrow. Stop living for next month. Stop living for next year. Live for today. Because if, for, you know, Lord forbid, but if you were to be in that day and something happened, your life was done, you want to be able to say, I was happy. You know, I, I lived every day to my fullest potential even today, unfortunately, this happened, but I woke up in, in a good mood or I enjoyed my day. I enjoyed spending time with my friends, my last moments with my family or whatever. Stop trying to live in times that don't exist right now. Live in the moment. Live for right now. Make your decisions. Don't, don't be an emotional decision maker. We'll talk about that in another video because I am one of those. Lord, but just try to live for that day you know take it's just like just imagine yourself eating food you only can bite off as much as you can chew so go ahead and just do that with each day just little by little and just enjoy it find something to be happy for find something to be joyful for find something to appreciate for that day because you waking up in general for that day or in that moment that you woke up was was the biggest blessing that you can get for today. So while you're still here, every minute, every hour, just find something to be thankful for and cherish it. Find something if, oh, well, even if you just want to relax, you know, I haven't relaxed in a while. I'm going to take, take a few hours and just relax and just think about some good things. Keep yourself in, a, in good spirits. You know, feed your, your mind some good stuff. Read you a good book. Re watch something on TV that, that feeds your spirit, feeds your soul. Do something to appreciate that day. Don't just let it pass by. You know, just like what I said earlier about just sleeping the day away. I've had those days too, especially when you get in those depressive modes. Like you ain't depressed, but you claimed it for yourself or you just went through something really hard and you're just like, oh, I don't even want to talk to nobody. I'm not happy. And so you get in this funk and you just sleep the whole day away. Try not to do that, y'all, because that could be your last day or, you know, there could have been something that you missed. If you would have, had you gone outside, maybe you would have found your spouse. Had you had, you know, gone and did something that you enjoyed doing, maybe you would have made you some new friends. You know, like, that's all I'm saying. Like, try to take advantage of every day. The best that you can, enjoy it, and just remember that every time you take a breath, somebody else took their last. So, with that being said, this was my 10 things that I've learned and I've accepted for 2021. I really hope you all be safe. Um, I know a lot of stuff is going on with the viruses and everything. So be safe. Try not to be in big gatherings if you can avoid it. Um, enjoy your bringing in the new year. Enjoy 2022. You know, have your goals set. Love on it. Love on yourself. Love Just love on you. You are magnificent. And just appreciate the life that you have and make the best out of it. Don't, don't go around complaining. Don't be over here, you know, just, just, you know, being blah about life. Because everybody doesn't get the opportunity to make it to the age you are. So enjoy it. Be safe. Enjoy your new year. Happy new year. So this is my last video of 2021. Um, I'll see you guys in 2022, and I just hope that um, you all just share with me any anything you want to share, whether it's something you learned in 2021 or just whatever your plans are for the new year. Share it. You know, we'll like to hear about it. I'll, I'm not judging anybody. I like to talk, and we will keep the conversation going, you know, but just let me know. Drop it in the comments box below. We'll keep the conversation going, and we will talk next time. Bye.